Hello and welcome to Oystermouth Castle. Built in the 12th century, we are now standing in the oldest part of the castle called the Keep and this is where it all began. So in the 13th century, when the castle became more of a residence for the de Breos family, William de Breos in particular, he extended and made the North Keep, which is where we're going to take you guys now. Just walked up from one of the cellars, which the castle has in abundance. And in this particular cellar, they would have kept provisions for the castle, including barrels of beer and barrels of wine. They were, after all, Normans. Here we are in the, uh, in the North Keep, and the North Keep is a, a later addition um, uh, built by William de Breos, and it has a joint function, it's accommodation on, on this level. This way you'll be able to see um, the joist holes which supported the first floor which is the uh, referred to as the solar where the Lord and Lady would have uh, would have been and they would be their private rooms and here would have been accommodation and if you look here you can see um, what's described as this coked fireplace and one of only two parts of the castle where you will find um, that approach and it's made of sandstone, coconut sandstone, rather than limestone, because limestone bursts when it's heated or overheated. And behind me it are the two great windows, one mostly broken down now, but there's another one here lower down, with seating where cushions, there would have been cushions arranged and people could have looked out over the bay. And then the other holes that you can see up here, the smaller, holes are called putlog holes and the Normans used wooden scaffolding which they kept up because they were constantly uh, working on the interior of the castle and the exterior to keep it as strong as possible against any, so any form of Welsh attack. Sadly for us we have p pigeon problem at certain times of the year because they're perfect nesting boxes for pigeons. Now we're in the vaulted chamber, one of the more interesting rooms in the castle. And it's interesting for various reasons. It's got a vaulted ceiling, as you can see, and it, it's, uh, it's wonderful building uh, practice by the Normans, who they were very good at such things. Um, but also it's got some interesting features to it. It's got one of the nine garda robes, which is simply a, um, a Norman toilet in the corner of the room there. Some people used to think that it was maybe used as a prison, but it's unlikely because the drawbar hole is on the inside of the, uh, of the room and that would be not much use in terms of uh, a prison. And in the centre there's um, a pillar, um, which is a supporting uh, element uh, to the room, but there's also many stories about the White Lady or the Castle Ghost who uh, is meant to um, haunt the castle from time to time. And one of the stories goes that if you run around the uh, uh, whipping post, as it's referred to often, um, a dozen times, um, then the White Lady could well appear. Um, whether you'll see the White Lady on your visit to Oystermouth Castle or not is a moot point, but if you do, we'd all be grateful if you reported it back to the desk.
Here we are to one side of the gatehouse, which is the major protection um, to the front side of the castle, and we're standing in what would have been the drum tower. What you can see is that this part is concave, and in normal circumstances they would be concentric, they would always be concentric because obviously that's the best means of uh, defence against full frontal attack. Uh, what we don't know uh, is whether this particular part of the castle was completed or whether it was completed and eventually knocked down. Um, but you should understand that the castle was a battle castle for many years but then quite quickly became um, a fortified home for the de Breos family who were the significant family who lived in this castle. So we're now in the gatehouse, uh, which was built in the 14th century. Um, and what we have here is a two-storey vaulted chamber. And within this, we have some interesting features, such as, for example, the portcullis chamber. And the portcullis would have been dropped down through this mechanism, which would have been on winches. But also we have um, a murder hole above, and through the murder hole would have been poured all sorts of nasty things really to deter the enemy, such as quicklime, which would have blinded you, um, but also other things such as hot sand and potentially tar also. So now we're on the lower ground floor of the chapel block, which is Alina's Chapel. And as we go up the spiral staircase, you'll see a series of graffitis on the wall on the left hand side. And these are extremely intricate, some of these, um, and they range from the earlier 20th century right through to the present day. So we're now in um, the, one of the most contemporary parts of the castle, which is the old chapel block. And we're on one of uh, three spiral staircases um, uh, that leads up to the first floor of the chapel. Um, and these are clockwise spiral staircases. And this was thought that um, they would give the best advantage to the defendants because they could hold the rope with their left hand and have swords in their right. So if there's any trouble, they could easily sort of run up the staircase and meet the enemy. So now we're entering the first floor, um, which was the private chapel of the family. And this chapel was attributed to Lady Alina de Mowbray, which, who was married at the time to um, Lord John de Mowbray. And Lady Alina was the daughter of William de Breos III. So the workmanship inside of the chapel is unsurpassed um, compared to other areas of the castle. So if you follow me, I can show you some of the areas of most interest. So we have fantastic confessional areas here, which are these two areas here where people would have sat. So they were almost like pew areas, and they might have been used for the family's private um, Bible readings. And here, you can actually see where the religious vessels would have been washed, which is the Piscina area here. Um, once the communion would have ended, those vessels would have been washed inside of the Piscina. So the chapel itself would have been lit by five um, windows, um, one of which is this tracery window here, which gives us fabulous views out onto the bay today. Um, and also, just to imagine what this chapel would have looked like, it would have been absolutely gleaming, probably white and full of colour, probably reds, golds and greens as well. And some of this pigment can still be detected today. We have some 14th century plaster work that remains inside the castle, um, depicting various religious scenes. Um, uh, some that actually depict angels or seraphim as they are known, um, but also other things such as um, shields as well and animals too.
So this is a castle full of mystery and intrigue. So I hope today that our film's given you a taste of what you can experience on your exploration of Oystermouth Castle. If you do want more information, of course, please talk to one of our volunteers on the desk. And we also have a guide as well.